Hello folks, yeah it's funny old Peter Elgar once again from Brentwood Essex England here well I'm feeling a bit better with all my health and my head cancer thing is a bit healed up so I've got a new new skin on the top there <laughs> taken out of my arm <laughs> and it will never grow anymore that hair there I'm permanently bald but anyway my health is not too bad so this time I'm going to talk about some Zeiss Netar cameras from going back to 1934 to the 1950s there's a whole load of Zeiss Icon cameras and there's people much more expert than me but I found out some details about the ones I've got so this book McEwen's Guide to um, Ancient Antique and Classic Cameras and other Zeiss I've got some information there that's where I've got it from so I've got three to show you and some pictures taken with them. So this first one is the earliest one I've got. This is called a Zeiss Icon Bob. And where do you find Bob? Well, on all these ones you find it engraved along the top here. And it's a bit in the leather. It's a bit difficult to see, but it says Bob 510 stroke 2. And um, in the McEwen's Guide it says it had made between 1934 to 1941. Now this has a, a Zeiss Net, um, is it a Netar? They've got Nova and Netar. This one's got a Netar lens, 105mm because it's 6x9 format. It's got a very poorly, um, very poor selection of shutter speeds. You've only got two instantaneous ones. You can have it on a 75th or you can have it on a 25th. And you've got brief time and you've got time exposure. Now unfortunately since I took the pictures the shutter's packed up. And no matter what I do, I put in cable release, can't get the blasty thing to work. What a shame! Because this has got a very sharp lens. The maximum aperture of this lens is 7.7. .7. So I've been out and done some pictures with it and I cleaned inside the lens, I took off the front element very carefully, got inside with some tissue and cleaned up all the haze. And I put in 120 film, I, I've done it with some colour and some black and white. So we'll show you a bit of both. There's the 6x9 format and then um, I have to really have it on a tripod because I can't guarantee holding it steady at a 75th of a second and definitely not a 25th all the time. I took it out on tripod. So there's a couple of pictures with it. The first one I took on black, black and white film and I've sepia toned it. That is a picture at our village of Blackmore in Essex. And it was on Orwo film. And I developed that in FX18 because at the time I wasn't using my 510 Pyro. And I've sepia toned it so it was black and white. And that's the first one. Very sharp. Ever the shop. Stop down to about F16. Then my friend took me to Paper Mill Lock near Chelmsford. That is a picture taken at Paper Mill Lock. These are only six by four prints. And some, oh, some old Kodak out of date film. And this for a 1934 camera, not bad. And it was on a tripod. It was lovely sunshine. That's what you need with the old cameras, sunshine to get some contrast. Because the lenses are all uncoated. But that was that was with that one. Unfortunately, poor old Bob, he, he must be retired because he doesn't work anymore. The shutters don't work. And the second one, I was given this by a gentleman. This is another one. Takes six by nine. So when you open these folders, you press it and you you don't let it flop open, you let it gen gently come out, all gentle. And these struts make make certainly nice and stiff. Yes, they've clicked into place. This one has inscribed on it, it's a Netta 515 stroke 2. Um oh yes, here we are. It's along here. It, it, you can't see it, but it's inscribed in the, le in the, in the leatherette there. 515 stroke 2. It says Netar. doesn't say Bob. A poor old, won't to 
He must have been fed up with poor old Bob. They promoted him to be a netar. <laughs> but this one, it's got a 105mm lens to cover 6x9. But this time, it's a... What? It's a netar and a stigma. 105 but the lens is 6.3. Whereas Bob had an f7.7. And this one has got as what is known as a Derval shutter underneath. I've never heard of that word before. The poor old Bobby just had a Zeiss Icon shutter. God knows what it was, but this one says Derval. Never heard of it. But there we are. I took this off, managed to get the tiny little screw out, minute screw, carefully cleaned it all inside, and managed to get that little screw back again after about 10 attempts. <laughs> I got it cleaned up. So this time the shutter has goes to one hundredth of a second. Now this one is 1937 to 41. When it exactly came out, you can't tell. Um, unless I do research on the number. But 1937 to 41. It got hundredth, a fiftieth, and a twenty-fifth brief and time exposure. And this time, luckily, it all works. And out of, the eight, out of the eight frames, I got six good ones. One of them had camera shake, because I took it a 50th, hand holding it. And the other one, I very carefully used a 25th with a cable release. And I must have held the cable release in for a long time, make certain it went. When the negative came out, it was black. I'm, I must have held the shutter open somehow, but I got six out of the eight. This was on Orbo film. Processed in 510 pyro staining developer. Now you open the back again. Here we are. Exactly the same as the previous ones. Just like Bob. And there's your little red window. Down there. Where you can see the numbers going through. So you've got to make certain you use a film. With a backing paper. and um, Which will wrap with red. So you can see the numbers. <laughs> Some makes a film. You can't see the numbers. <laughs> because they, they've forgotten about these old cameras. I use the direct vision viewfinder on this for a couple, which pops up like that. Like a real real ancient press photographer, look at that. Get get George the King George the Fifth and Queen Mary coming out the state coach, you know. <laughs> King George the Fifth in the 1930s, going click. <laughs> and then there's a tiny little viewfinder here which is like a, a reflex viewfinder. I, I use that for a couple. So we'll have a look at that. This is one taken of our ruins. That is taken at an um, aperture of F9. It must have been, I think it was 50th F9. Because I, I rated the uh, Orbo film at 64 ASA because it was dated 1992. It wasn't on a tripod, but I balanced my elbows carefully and fired it away. The 510 Pyro did a good job. Then I photographed our sculpture outside of our town hall. This is another one of my test subjects. This was at minimum focusing distance of 7 feet. Now, of course, there's no range fine. You've got to guess the distance. So I thought, oh, good guess, good guess. I've got it sharp. Managed to guess. 7 foot, because that was an F11, and even an F11 with a 6x9 format, you don't get a great depth of field. So all the background behind, the town hall background out of focus, is a bit soft at the top. The lens, even at F11, doesn't cover the whole frame pin sharp, no, because it's an old, very old lens, uncoated, but at least it's clean, because I've got all the haze off. Now, this one, is a square one. This came from my camera club mate. Um, he died and his widow gave me his camera. This is a nice icon netar from 1950s. Oh, in 1949 to 57 these were made. So I took square pictures of this. It's got a... Oh yeah, open it here. There's a square format. Now the red window, of course, is in the middle, because it's square. So you, your numbers from 1 to 12 go across in the middle. There's a red window for it there. So it's all been working. 
that was fairly clean this lens but I, I did clean it up this time it's got a Novar and a Stigmat 75mm focal length to cover the 6x6 format and a Pronto shutter and it has some speeds on it goes to one um, I've got to get my glass in there I've forgotten this, even these, having so many so many flipping cameras I've got a 200th and down to a 25th with brief and there's no slow speeds and um, you can use a cable release there we're seeing that's that's a 50th that's a 25th you put it under B, open, shut, open, shut. This one, being modern, got a flash synchronization. Yes, with for electronic flash. I've used that. It's quite a sharp little lens, this Nova and Stigma. And it's um I've done some pictures with it, but I've cropped them to oblong from the square. So I'm gonna show you some oblong, but they were originally square. Now this is one of the first rolls I took with a colour, our War Memorial. Now on this side here, there's a bit of flare, and I found there were some minute holes in the bellows, causing, causing that fog in there. I thought, what can I do? So I, what I've done, I painted some black modelling paint, which I use for touching up cameras on the outside, where I could see the holes. And it's sealed them up nicely. It doesn't fog anymore. This this, this one taken on a tripod at night. It's a, a night scene of our local pub along the road. One of my test subjects. I always use it, that, and the publican came out. What what what, no, what I was doing? So I told him I was doing a test picture, and I'm from Brentwood District Photographic Club, using old cameras <laughs> to keep me alive. So that came out well, and um, I believe that was on Orwo film, but that was on a tripod. I got, you just got the lights on. It came out well. There we are. That's, that's coupled with the Novar um, 6x6. So, as I say, I'm, I'm no expert on Zeiss Icon cameras, but the ones I have, I've had some fun with. So, if a poor old bloke here can continue going, for a little while longer, I hope to show some more videos. But thanks for watching this one. And if you want to contribute to my expenses, like expensive electricity, look at the gas and electric prices we've got to pay now. It's, uh, it's rocketed up 35%, going up again shortly. So expensive electricity and some chemicals and film. You can click on buy me a coffee link down below. If you want to contribute to my expenses. And those of you who have already, thank you very much. Give me my army salute. There we are. I hope to see you again shortly. And thanks for viewing this one. Where we are, when we can switch it off. Here we go. Oh, bye-bye, folks.